going live right now, and I'm pretty excited to be here. And Martika, it is great. I, I don't know if uh, it has actually gone up on Facebook yet, but I always assume that it has. So we'll make the assumption it has, and I do believe that we are live right now. And my name is Kathleen Gage, as I hope you know, because you're on my page, and I'm with my good friend and a colleague, a client. Um, I, I've learned many things from her about grieving. Her name is Martika Wiley. So Martika, great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh oh. I, okay. It looks like for some reason, I'm not sure. Okay. The meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Okay. So Martika, you have a podcast show and as a podcast host myself of two shows, I often have people who have never even been on a podcast show say, I think I should start a show. And it's like, well, no, my recommendation is get on some shows first, and then let's see if it's actually going to be a fit for you. So what is your take on starting a show? Well, commitment. It takes commitment. You have to be committed to doing this. So um, and whether it's once a week, once a month, uh, you have to have some kind of consistency. Uh, they say there's about, I think, over 2 million podcasts that are registered but only less than a, a half a million that are actually active. So that'll tell you um, that it takes uh, commitment and you're not gonna make money off of it right away. It takes time to grow, patience. But if, you, if it's something that you really enjoy doing and you love talking to people, I would recommend it. But then again, you need to do your homework and take uh, Kathleen Gage's uh, course or advice that she gave. She's my podcast mentor. <laughs> Thank and you. Uh, she helped me get started with my pad podcast. And uh, I really enjoy what I do. It's uh, helping people with their grieving is not an easy thing. But uh, I figure if people aren't going to come to me for their help, I will go to them. So that's why I did uh, why I started the podcast. And, and you've had your show a little over a year now, correct? Yeah, it's a year and a few months. Yeah. Okay, okay. And what would you say um, that you know now that you didn't know a year ago? What, what are some of the lessons that you've learned? Oh, I guess just the, the prepping beforehand. And um, I always, I'm a spiritual person, so I always ask the spirit to help guide me through it because we're all going to make mistakes. Um, you know, learning that you're going to make mistakes and that's part of the process and don't beat yourself up too much when you do make mistakes because editing mistakes, uh, scheduling mistakes, you know, it's all part of the learning curve when you're doing your own podcast. But, uh, you know, I think the, the outcome, the benefit is, you know, you get to meet new people all the time. You have conversations and you're helping people. You don't even know who, and you could actually be saving someone's life and not even knowing it. So to, for me, that's the greatest reward. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so let's take a step back and, and uh, I want to remind people that this is Kathleen Gage, obviously, and uh, I'm talking with Martika Wiley, who is the host of Grieve with Ease podcast show. Uh, she's had her show about a year now, and her whole focus is on helping people through the grieving process in a number of different ways. And her podcast show happens to be one of those ways. And um, we actually, my team helped her to get the podcast up and running. And there, there were some very key elements. And one is, I think you were smart enough try, to not try to figure it all out by yourself. I think that's a sign of intelligence is when it's going to take more time for us to figure out than to actually pay a team to have it done, get it done and get up and running. Uh, that's a pretty smart thing to do. And a lot of people, they try to wear all the hats in their business. So let's start with how you came up with the theme of your show. Well, it's based on the book that I wrote. Uh, called Having Fun with God. And I thought, well, how could I take this book and make a podcast out of it? And so I had to kind of rewrite, not rewrite, but reread and, and see where there's a common thread. And I talk about death. I've lost a few family members, but I also talk about gaining family members. Um, but uh, yeah, just the helping people with their grieving process, because, um, you know, uh, spirit would say, you know, a lot about death and loss, you know, you could teach about that. So I thought, okay. And then that's what I decided that was the topic, but the grief of these came later as opposed, you know, to, uh, 
to have something catchy that made sense so that people knew what the what the topic was so that was all important and it's important to to be on a few other podcasts just to get a feel of what it's all about before you actually do your own i didn't just do my own podcast without being on other people's shows and it you learn a lot from what other people are doing and that'll help you to further it along and things don't have to take forever like editing and things right. like that you can learn about the new programs that are out there you know I switched from Lipson to Buzzsprout for example because I found it a lot more easy user friendly okay but then okay. I learned that from somebody else that has a podcast so you kind of kept notes you know you're networking with people and you learn and grow as you go Absolutely. I love that. Learn and grow as you go. And you have such a play on words. It's like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I love way, to, way grow. to grow. I, I, you did yeah. that earlier, but yeah. you know, let's, let's take a look at um, like what it takes to get an episode out and, and it's done, it's put to bed and I call it putting the puppy to bed. Um, mm -hmm. And from beginning to end, okay, you, you're going to find a, a guest for your show. Now, do they approach you or do you approach them? What's kind of the criteria there for you? Well, I think in the beginning, you're going to be approaching them. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what it was for me. And I went on, uh, there's pod it that they've, they, I think they've changed them their name to pod match. Mm -hmm. There's matchmaker.fm. So there's a platforms that you can go to. You could even advertise on Facebook if you want, but then again, you have to decide what kind of guests do you want on your podcast? Do you want uh, experts? Do you want somebody who has just has life experience? You know, I had in the very beginning, all kinds, like I'll take whoever on my show because I wasn't being too picky getting it up and running. So I had a friend and coworker talk about her uh, experiences with loss of her husband. I mean, she didn't have like a you know, a website or a book or anything like that, but she shared and that was the whole point. And so you want to actually, you know, keep, you know, searching for all kinds of people. Like for me, I was attracting mediums because they deal with a lot of people that want to know, you know, how their loved one is doing. Can you communicate with them? And so I'd get mediums. I got people like death doulas, um, cel cel uh, celebrants and, um, you know, authors. You said death doulas. What is that? Oh, that is someone who um, actually helps uh, um, with the death doula. They kind of work with the family when the person's in oh, hospice. Okay. And okay. so they kind of, you know, they're there for the family to help um, with the transition. Okay. And if okay. the person doesn't have family, they're there to help with that person's transition. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. as people are thinking about getting on a show like yours now, um, I know with my two shows, there's a very specific criteria. One is called vegan visibility. The other one is plant-based eating for health. And the number one criteria is that whoever comes on my show, whether they run a manufacturing company, whether they're a consultant, whether they're a health coach, uh, it doesn't matter. An author, uh, they have to be 100% void of animal and dairy. That's in the description of the show. And it never ceases to amaze me when somebody comes to me and they say, I want to be on your show. And the first question, and they never mention that. They, they don't mm -hmm. go, by the way, I, I noticed that you only want people who are void of animal and dairy. And they give me this whole spiel that obviously is a copy and paste. And it's like, okay, that's the first indicator that you're probably just throwing mud on the wall and you're not looking for specific type shows, but I'll send a message back and I'll go, are you hundred percent void of animal and dairy? And I have people that go, well, I'm almost there. I'm about 90 to 95%. It's like, well, then you're not coming on my show. I'm really, really clear on that. And a lot of hosts are very clear on the kind of guests they want. So what, what can you recommend to people that are looking to get on shows, what they need to do in their own research? Well, make sure that they're a right fit for the show. Like, um, you know, it, it can't just be about selling your book or products. It, you have to give value. And that's what I say to people. Um, maybe you haven't experienced a loss, but you know, you, you've done the research, you, you have a degree, but you have to give value. I don't mind helping people uh, you know, with their book sales or product sales, as long as they're giving value. Otherwise it's just, okay, this is a waste of my time and your right. time and everybody else's time. Cause the whole premise is about helping people with the grieving process. I, I love that because, you know, it, 
sometimes I've had guests come on and they never take a breath. It's like, oh my gosh. So now I actually not about 80 to 90% of the time, I will require a pre-interview conversation. If somebody approaches me and they seem like they're a good fit, the first question, are you hundred percent boy? If they say yes, then we go to the next step. And I like to have a pre-conversation because I want to see how they are in a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can't get a word in edgewise, I probably won't have them on the show because it's a conversation. It's not about them having a monologue. It's a dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so besides pod match, where are some places that you recommend that people start looking for these opportunities to be on podcast shows? Um, uh, some, some social media platforms, like for example, I'm on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so I, I put out there, you know, anyone in the Beth doula medium, and I had a whole caregivers, I had a whole list of people that I thought would be, you know, celebrants, funeral, um, directors that would be, uh, you know, good for my show, a, a right. good fit, but I didn't get that great of a response. So, um, but it could have been maybe the time of season, the time of day. I don't know. I just did it the one time, but, uh, you know, joining, uh, matchmakers, at, uh, dot FM, I, I seem to get a lot of people through there mm -hmm. and then just networking, you know, clubhouse is another, another place to, to look for, for guests. And, um, yeah. So from the host's perspective, what are some of the most important things that people need to know before they actually start a show? Because again, I get people all the time saying, oh, I want to start a show. I heard I should start a show. It's just like saying, I heard I should be on Facebook or I heard I should be on TikTok. It's like, wait a minute, let's figure out what you're trying to accomplish and then determine if that's really the best uh, use of your time, your money and your energy. So as a host, what are some things that you would advise to people to consider before ever starting a show? Well, um, the commitment, how much time are you willing to put into it? How much research are you willing to put in it? And then how much money are you willing to put in it? Because it does cost money to have a host. It does cost money to um, edit. Um, and you know, it just, it, it does add up and you, you might not think that um, uh, you might be expecting all kinds of downloads and the first go, right? Um, you can't expect inst instant success. And I don't know if we already covered this and I might've said this already, I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive, but out of maybe 2 million that have been registered with Spotify and Apple, only 500,000, which is half a million are actually active. So you want to make sure that you have content, you, you know, you have an idea of how the show looks. And for the most important thing for me was to visualize doing it because I couldn't see myself having a podcast at all. I'm like, why is this push? I was getting so many emails from teachers all over the place. It seems about podcasting. It was like the universe was telling me to do it. And I'm like, I don't know if I could do the, like being a guest is one thing because right. there's no, no commitment. You're in and out and you don't have to worry about editing or any of that kind of stuff or putting it out there, uh, you know, unless the host gives you a link and then it's your responsibility to share. Right. Right. Because that's the other thing, marketing. And, you know, it's your responsibility to help share that podcast. You can't leave everything on the host's shoulders. I do what I can to, you know, let them know this is the, uh, social media platforms that I use to, to push the uh, episodes, but they have to do their part as well. That's if they're selling books or products, right? That's Absolutely. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because it's amazing how many people want to be on a show and then they ghost you after the fact of like, well, okay, I was on your show. You do all the marketing. It's like, no, it's a give and take. And mm -hmm. what I find is the more that somebody, uh, puts effort into marketing an episode that they've been on with my show, there's a chance that I can bring them back because I've got two shows. And so mm -hmm. if they have done right by me on one show, then I know that they're a good fit for the other one because it's all about vegans, you know, us crazy. Mm -hmm. vegans. But I'm glad that you mentioned that because a lot of it, yeah, you like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm still coming after you on that, but uh, no, <laughs> but That's the, okay. the, yeah, <laughs> the fact is, is that it's not just about you taking as a guest, it's about you giving. And it's not about how wonderful you are. The host wants to know that you're going to be 
high value to their audience because they don't care how wonderful you are. I've had people, you know, tell me I I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. It's like, great. What are you going to do for my audience? Because that's what we're most concerned about. So let's take a step back if you will. And I want to, I, I actually want to frame this with how far you've come because when you first started getting on podcast shows, you, you were a little reserved and for the people that are watching this now and who will watch the replay, I actually texted Martika and I said, Hey, I've got this idea. I want to go live and I want to talk about starting a podcast show. Are you game? And she goes, give me five minutes. And I said, well, give me five. I got to make my cup of tea, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you just jumped in and that's Mm -hmm. the beauty of just doing this. It's like, Mm -hmm. you've been doing it for over a year now. You've got a skill set that you didn't have a year ago and you're doing beautifully at it. So I, you know, I just want to acknowledge that for people who say, oh, I, you know, you're lucky that you're this good Martika. It's like luck has nothing to do with it. It's Mm -hmm. that Martika rolled up her sleeve. She made the investment. She got in there and she started a show. So speaking, of investments let's um assume that somebody has their show up and running okay we'll just put that puppy to bed the ongoing investments what are the ongoing investments you've got hosting you've got editing do you do your own editing or do you have somebody yeah. edit? no I, okay. I do as much of my own work as i possibly can okay i'm, I'm okay. cheap I'm really, well, cheap. <laughs> you know, and it, it, for me, it's actually, I do my own editing and I'll tell you why I usually write a blog post to go with the episode. And I find that when I'm in there editing and I'm listening to the episode again, mm-hmm. when I'm interviewing somebody and having that conversation, I have one hat on when I'm editing, I'm putting a different hat on and I get to listen as if I'm one of my audience members and, or one of my community members. So I hear it from a whole different perspective. And I, I, Sometimes I go, that guest was beyond, beyond amazing. I already knew they were amazing, but they, they just blew me out of the water and I get to learn new things. So I, I edit my own episodes. Um, what, what software do you use for editing? Uh, GarageBand. Okay. And yeah. how much would you say from beginning to end? Okay. You're looking for a guest or they're looking for you. You interview them. Uh, you do the editing, the episode goes live and you market it one half hour episode. How much time goes into that finished product by the time it's put to bed and you're on to the next episode? Um, now that I've gotten uh, the hang of it, probably two hours. Okay. So it's two hours of your time. Uh, financially, what kind of an investment are you making mm. with your hosting and everything? Um, probably a hundred dollars a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's something I want people to consider. It's like, let's say, and that's, that's actually pretty reasonable. So let's say you're putting a hundred dollars a month into your podcast show. You're doing four episodes a month. You're doing all the marketing that's two hours a week. And I think you're being a little conservative on that. And maybe I'm just real slow. I don't know, but, um, and maybe it's cause I have two shows. I don't know, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. everything I do is marketing. So what can I say? It's mm-hmm. kind of like, that's, you know, that's the hat I always wear, but um, let's say it's 10 hours a month to get one episode soda week up and a hundred dollars a month. The question I have for people before you start your own show is what is your plan for a return on investment? Because if you want no return on investment, that's great. But have you looked to the future and said, okay, these are the financial goals I have. These are the download goals I have. What If that's your goal. And then you reverse engineer, what are you going to do in order to accomplish that? And what are your measurements? Um, How do you look at your analytics? So what can you, what else can you tell people? Oh, first of all, gosh, the one question as a host, I should be asking, but we're not doing a podcast. So, oh, well, but no, quite seriously. um, How do people find you? First of all, what's your web address and then drive them to your, uh, your show. Uh, My website is uh, grievewithese.com. And uh, the handle that I'm using is Buzz, Buzzsprout. So, and I'm on Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, all the big ones. All the big ones. Okay. So yeah. it's grievewithease.com, which I love that name. That's, you know, that's such an easy to remember name. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. When you come up with a show name, you want to make sure that your show name really matches the theme of your show. Mm-hmm. And that it's easy for people to remember. So, um, you know, I, I just want to say thanks for for jumping on and, and uh, being a, b- a good sport and just playing full out. What uh, what are your final thoughts for people? What else can you give them that would help them to decide? Yes, I should start a show, or no, I shouldn't start a show at this point in time. 
Well, be on a few shows first. Just get your, okay. your feet wet. Be on a few shows and see if you like being on a few shows. And if that if that appeals to you and you enjoy talking to people and you you're ready to put some money and commitment into it and patience, unless you're somebody who's already out there and, and has a huge following, then you'll have a lot of downloads. But if you're just starting and no one knows you, then then yeah, it'll take time. But then again, do what you love and the money and the downloads and all that you love will follow, right? You, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that about if you're a big name, you're going to have more downloads than somebody that's just starting out. And the, the thing that I see people do is they'll start something and they compare themselves to, let's say, Rob Moore, who is a mass, 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 mass marketer out of the UK. The guy makes tens of millions a month, not a year, a month. This wow. guy's just a rock star. And <laughs> so they'll, they'll look at what they're doing, compare it to what he's doing and they'll go, well, I must be a failure. It's like, no, he's been doing a lot longer than you have. And he's got a different personality. He's got a lot of money to put into it. So if you're just starting out, the, the trend that I'm hearing for 2022 is make a commitment for the full year to anything that you're going to commit to, whether it's your health, whether it's a way of eating, whether it's a business idea, whether it's going on one particular social network. And my, my big commitment is every day I go live in 2022, Monday through Friday. Friday. So it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, otherwise people will see me in my work in the yard clothes with no makeup on, the hair's not done. And yeah, maybe they want to see that. I don't know. But, um, truth <laughs> Why not? The authentic uh, Kathleen. The right? authentic. Well, this is pretty authentic. Yeah, but, I know. But seriously, the, the, the commitment I've made for 2022, I've got a couple of things. One is that I go live every day. So thank you for supporting me in that, Martika, because that really did help. You're and welcome. the other thing is I'm going to learn clubhouse inside out. I'm going to go on a stage every single day. I have rooms set up that I'm going to be going live with. And those are my two main commitments for the year and everything else kind of falls under that. So I, I really want to encourage people look at that one big thing you can commit to, and then look at what comes underneath that. Don't assume that just because you're doing this one thing, you shouldn't do anything else. It's kind of like one thing leads into another, but stick with it for a year. You've stuck with it for a year and look at your opportunities that will be opening up. I mean, it, it's like you have more opportunity for book sales. You have more opportunities to get on summits. You have more opportunities to be invited on other people's shows. And actually, I very briefly want to talk about being on other people's shows to promote your show. Have you done that? And if so, has it helped? Um, I've done that. Yes. Uh, I've uh, interviewed people that also have their podcasts. And so we kind of swap, right? Interviews. Um, I don't know how it's helped. I, I, I think it's helping. Um, I, you know, I did get uh, one, one feedback review email uh, not too long ago. So that was good. It was both positive and negative. So I got, you know, two, it was a two in one. And I thought, you know, we, we tend to kind of dwell on the negative, but um, that little voice would say, don't, don't worry about the negative, right. you know, as long as people are listening so, you know, I hope to get more emails of feedback. So that would be great because that would give me a gauge on, you know, actually, you know, people that are listening and what they feel about the show. It really helps me. Well, when this finishes propagating and all that, I don't know what happens with lives, but I will make sure to put the link to your, your podcast show and your website in the, uh, we're, we're not doing show notes, but in the description. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that Rob, because I follow Rob Moore now, and I also follow John Lee, there's a few uh, Diamond Diva off of uh, Clubhouse is another one I'm following. And I'm mm -hmm. really looking at these rock stars and I'm saying, okay, I want, I aspire to be accomplishing a lot of what they're accomplishing. And there's that, that truth in the five people you surround yourself with help to raise you up or bring you down. And so I would prefer to get raised up. Mm -hmm. One thing that Rob Moore says is he goes, if you're not getting negative feedback, you're not playing big enough. He goes, he welcomes the negative feedback because that gives him thoughts for other products he can create that gives him thoughts for who's the, the jerk out there. Is it him? Is it the other person? It mm -hmm. also um, lets him know that he's playing a bigger game because mm -hmm. if we're always keeping everything safe and we're trying to be very protective over our energy of like, Oh, don't give me any bad feedback. Uh, we're not going to get anywhere. So be willing to stretch yourself, be willing to have people give you that feedback and, you know, take it with a grain of salt because there's some people that are armchair philosophers. They're just mean people. 
other people are giving really valuable, valuable input. So with that in mind, what are your final thoughts, Martika? Um, I love podcasting. I really enjoy doing it. And I've had to tell my inner child, you know, uh, just not to ask how people got to be so cute and cuddly, because that's one of her favorite questions. <laughs> it's, you know, it's supposed to be serious. Uh, you know, we're talking about grief and uh, loss and, and uh, yeah. So I hear a just, kitty cat in the background. Yeah. You speaking, know, I of always... grief, speaking of grief and loss, I'm sorry to break your, anybody's heart. He's not well. I'm oh, going to have sorry. to put him down. And I am I, so sorry. Yeah, I did give him some CBD oil. I was hoping okay. that would help ease it. But I, I'm glad we're wrapping this because I'm going to have to tend to Okay, my okay. Well, yeah. I'll send good thoughts because uh, I've been there and uh, I know how hard it is to uh, okay. help them do that transition over the Rainbow Bridge. So you have my, my thoughts and prayers. And thank, thank you for you. your time today. Thank and you, uh, to, to everybody out there, have a great day. Take care.